Well, amen. Amen, amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. You're in trouble. I got to preach on me tonight. No, just, just kidding. I'm done. Hallelujah. But I am from uh, Pueblo, Colorado. I'm Pastor Charles Garcia, my wife, Kim. Hallelujah. We pastor that church along with my five children, and uh, it's been a great time. This is my son, Aaron. Hallelujah. And uh, the one that did that beautiful singing, uh, one of those, there was a couple, but more, my daughter, Rhea, and she's been singing for us since you, I believe, when she was 10, 10 years old. You know, that, 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 that woman, real quick, as far as the church, she's, she's auditioned for so many of those televised things that you've seen on TV, and they've kept her for hours and got the release, never made the breakthrough, but, but she is just really tremendous. And, you know, if you're going to do anything good for your church, bring in the praise. Bring in the praise. And I'm so glad that God gifted her and, and gave her the ability to sing. Some people come just to hear Rhea sing. Amen. And so, you know, uh, we've been there for almost 20, 26 years. In August, it'll be 26 years that we've been in Pueblo. And there's a few reasons why we're still there. <laughs> you know, it's wild, I think. I forget who I was talking to before service. I said, my wife and I, we had agreed, met, met in Denver and fell in love here in Denver. And I thought she was a California girl. She came from California. Well, she thought I was a Denver guy. She thought I was here, but, I, you know, and I said, I don't know if I should tell her I'm from Pueblo. But the time came, we started talking, we fell in love, and it turns out we're both from Pueblo. We're both from Pueblo. But what we did say... <laughs> straight up truth that we would never pastor and that we would never move to Pueblo. When I left Pueblo, I was pretty much running from Pueblo and, and, and we wouldn't change it today for the world. Can somebody say amen? I say that to say that don't ever say you'll never do it. You know, and if God calls you to do it, you're going to know it because you're going to love it. <laughs> You're just going to love it. You know, love the place. Most people uh, can't believe that you, you can love Pueblo. But I'm telling you, when God puts it in your heart, you know that you're doing the will of God and that you're right where God wants you to be. Can somebody say amen? amen. How many know as pastors, we need to be assured of that. You know, I, I, who was it? Uh, Pastor um, Reuben, he was saying, you know, the, the, the leaf. You know, I do it better than him because I did it more than him. <laughs> and how many of us, thought he, somebody was saying, I almost, almost gave up. I didn't want to preach no more. And I said, eh, eh, you know, all depends on when you ask me if I want to continue or not. But one thing I'm assured that it, I'm going to go forward as long as God's called us, we're going to go forward. And so we've had a great time in Pueblo. And one of the reasons is, is because the people we got going there are golden I mean, they work themselves to death. We're a small bunch, but I'm telling you, they, they labor in the kingdom of God. They labor in the kingdom of God. And uh, also because of you. Well, a lot of you, you, you know, we thank you. Um, if you would, please, uh, if you've ever preached at VMFCC, Vision Ministries Family Christian Church, if you ever preached there, would you stand to your feet, please, if you preach there? Stand to your feet. Come on, come on, come on. Keep coming. <laughs> Look around you, you guys. Stay up. If you've been there, <laughs> how come your husband's not standing up? <laughs> you, you've been there. <laughs> but <laughs> Yes, you did. Now I'm hurt. Now, now I'm hurt. He don't remember our church. He... he he even got Luai in there after him. So every, you know, again, everybody but Dave, stand up. No, I'm just kidding. But, you know, I do want to tell you from our churches that we do appreciate you. We just appreciate you. It's because of you why <laughs> we just keep going. On. How many know we need each other? I, I, don't, I don't just say, that's why I go around hugging necks. Because I need you. Because I need you. My wife needs you. My family, we need you. I mean, I can't, we've been to this conference I don't know how many times. 
Hey, Zach, you made it, huh? Hey, Zach's in the house. <laughs> That's my son, Zachariah, with his beautiful wife. I uh, almost said Mariah. That's his twin sister, is Mariah, but his, but his wife, uh, <laughs> Monica. <laughs> last time I was here, I got Gideon's last name. He's my grandson wrong. But I'll tell you, it's just been great, and it's been great having you there. And, and I'd like to say that tremendous things are happening. I mean, supernatural. I, well, I would say that they have been supernatural because of what we've been through in the last few years. <laughs> I just thought of the devil and I laughed again <laughs> because he's been trying to shut us down. He, he's been, been, you know, things have been happening, deaths, and so many things you've heard. Uh, some of you, uh, when you came and heard part of our testimony of the church, but I'll tell you what. Nothing changed. Nothing changes. Nothing changes. We still continue. Thank you. Thank you all for helping us there. And we're just going to continue to fight the good fight until God calls us home. And somebody say amen. 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 God bless you. Hallelujah. I remember preaching... Uh, for, for your youth one time, I guess that counts. I was just, I apologize, brother. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yeah, my name's uh, David Clare, my beautiful wife, Loa, and I. Uh, we pastor Square One Ministries in Westminster, Colorado. And uh, just such a blessing to be there. Uh, just a, a few things that we're doing. Uh, Rose was one of the uh, worship leaders up here. She's our worship leader, and we're just so blessed uh, to have her as part of our ministry. And God's just doing just really great things. I mean, we've been uh, meeting with him every Sunday, man. He's, he's showing up, and his presence comes, and the word comes forth. And man, God's just good. How many of you know God is just good? And uh, there's, there's, you know, I, I've, I've been walking with the Lord for a long time long time and uh never grows old never grows old the presence of god the word of god hallelujah he's just he's just so good and and i'm grateful for that um we oversee uh several pastors in haiti we have a an elementary school there and uh, we just graduated 50 students from the elementary school and uh praise god so that's exciting getting ready to start up a uh, another school year here pretty soon. And, and that started right after the earthquake. Remember in 2010, uh, Haiti was really in the news, a uh, major earthquake. And uh, our, our main pastor there, Pastor Fleury, uh, just called me one day and said, what are we going to do with all these kids? You know, many of them had, all, had lost both their parents or at least a parent. And, uh, and so we started a school, <laughs> and, and uh, God's really used it and blessed it. There's also seven churches there. Uh, God's just, just working and moving, um, you know, powerful things happening there. Pray for Haiti uh, when you think about it. You know, it's one of the poorest countries in the Western Hemisphere, um, and it's just, you know, just a lot of challenges, but a lot of amazing stuff's happening there as well. Um, we also have a ministry that we call Harmony of Hope, and that's, uh, we have a weekly broadcast that we put out on uh, Hope Radio, it goes out to all, all of Asia. And, uh, you know, I don't know what the, what the reach is there because it's shortwave radio, but we'll know when we get to heaven how many people have heard the gospel through that. So we have a, amen, a little, little 15 minute spot each week where we share the gospel. And then we also go regularly to uh, a local bar and just for an open mic night and we worship and uh, have the opportunity to share the gospel. It's kind of one of those things, you know, I, I don't know. I've never pulled an altar call at the bar. Um, and, uh, but, you know, for the most part, I just sense God's anointing. I know he's working. I know he's moving. You just, you know what it's like, don't you, believers? Don't you know when, when God, you're like, God, this is good. You know, sometimes it's scary. It's different. You just got to let him direct your footsteps. And uh, so we're doing that. And it's just, it's just such a blessing. And we're so grateful uh, for all that God's doing, all that God has in store. And uh, we just, we love you. Thank you, Pastor Mike and Josie for letting us be here. Great to see uh, so many uh, familiar faces. And uh, great to see you. Love you. Whoever's next, I'm just kind of stalling right now and uh, talking about Jesus because he's awesome. Amen. And so, you know, hallelujah. God bless you.
How you doing? Oh, that was weak. You guys shouted louder than that when you partied. So how are you doing? Okay. So my name's Ben Gregory. My wife, Nadine, back there hiding. We pastor in North Glen, Colorado. We were sent out last year uh, out of this conference. And, um, and it's been amazing. It's been a trip. You know, never did acid, so I don't know what a trip is like. But, hey, it's a trip. It's a lot different from when we pastored in, in San Diego um, because the culture and the people are so different that uh, God's doing great things. We got, you know, announced that Friday, that Monday we had a building. God moved that quick. And, uh, you know, people were all, so do you have a building? It's like, it's not my problem. It's God's problem. He's sending us. He's got to provide. And sure enough, he did. We had like a whole school district to, to pick from, from schools. And so we went driving around one Saturday and uh, actually that Saturday after. And God showed us the school to start at. We left and we tried to cross over into Thornton. And he's like, "Nah, we're not going there. Oh, thank you, God. <laughs> Went back to the school that he showed us, and it was just there. You could feel the presence. And, um, and from that day on, I mean, all we pay for is the building rental and the, and the custodian to be there on our day off to open up for us. We don't pay for the chairs, what they normally charge. And everything else that they normally don't charge, that they charge, we don't pay for. We have not been on support from day one. We've been paying our tithe faithfully because God has opened doors. I mean, we, we have a small handful of people. Yes, about that much. And we're doing dynamic things in the kingdom of God. Because God's not about numbers, he's about people. I mean, our people, you'll see them, they're all wearing the black New Hope and Christ shirt because they're representing their hood. You know what I mean? Um, had one little setback in December, Christmas Day. Um, I was in the hospital. People felt bad for me, but I was like... I get asleep. <laughs> if you only know how much I'm enjoy enjoying this. And the food. It's really good food. I know you guys are like, hospital food just sucks. This was good food. I got to pick it myself. But they put a pacemaker in me. So from that day on, I became eco-friendly. Battery operated. My wife wants to call me a... Uh, Iron Man, I'm like, no, I'm more like Buzz Lightyear, just puttering along. And it put me off for like a month. I didn't preach. Um, New Hope stepped up and, and sent guys down. And, and so my plan to start the year of, of a vision of what God gave me was on hold. So as soon as I got back into the saddle again, even though I don't ride horses, because that would probably kill that poor horse. <laughs> I challenged the church in February. I said, next month in March, we're going to take a missions offering. And we're going to start giving into missions. Because one, God will bless the church. And not only that, he will bless you people. So we started doing that. Our mission's offerings more than our tithe. And, and God started moving. You know, first one person got a $2 raise. And then the next person, my wife starts her job on Monday making $3 more than what she was making at the other place. And doors are opening up. God's blessing his people because they're stepping out 
of a challenge and believing that God will move and we're able to reach another nation with just this much people. We're powerful because he's powerful. I ordered 2,500 door hangers because God gave me a glimpse of something to do. And we're going to hand them out. We're going to, and I'm inviting people to just reach out and reach out so we could pray for them. I'm not inviting them to church. I'm asking for what their need is. And with that, God showed me we are going to begin to get involved in people's lives and see these lives change through the power of prayer. And through it, he's going to draw them in. So it's like, I don't just have one teeny little vision. I've got this huge glimpse of what God's going to begin to do, not only in our church, but in our city and the surrounding cities where God's going to open doors and give us favor. We're going to take that area by storm, and we're going to kick the, the devil's doors in and start reaching people and seeing these broken homes and these lives change for the gospel. This is what God's doing in our church. And we're already seeing it. I mean, our poor church, kind of like my wife, they already know I'm nuts. They just humor me and just say, you're special. And I'm just like, I understand. But we're powerful because he's powerful. And we want to see by this time next year what God's doing. Because he's got so much he's going to do. And I'm like trying to run my little chubby butt behind him just to keep up. Like, Lord, got to slow down the ticker. It's battery operated, you know. But God will move with me as I move. And I'm obedient. We love you guys. We thank you guys for your prayers. And we just appreciate you at this conference in the world. Buenas tardes, Dios los bendiga, soy el pastor Rubén, iglesia en el principio, I'm Pastor Rubén, in the beginning church in South Carolina, my wife and I and my children, I think my kids are back there hiding somewhere, my wife Christina couldn't make it, we are pastoring in South Carolina, yeah, amen. I said, Lord, I, I want to do something different. And he sent me to South Carolina. Um, it's a good area to be in. We're in the city of Belton. Um, it's a small city, but it's, it's good for the Lord. And it's good for us. It's good for what God is doing there. Last year when we were here in the conference, um, Pastor Mike said, just go out and let God do what God does. When we went to Belton, you, most of you guys know in South Carolina, I always talk about this red dirt, this red dirt. And this red dirt is really hard to work on. Um, it's real difficult to get anything to grow on it. It's real difficult for anything to, to come out of it. But when we went there, I said, Lord, you're sending me to the Bible Belt. These people all their lives have been fed the gospel, they've been fed religion. What am I going to do? <laughs> what am I going to do? These people know you. They know everything about you. So I said, what is it that I am going to do that's different? He said, well, you're different. <laughs> I said, well, how different am I, Lord? He says, well, I said, well, I'm, I'm a criminal. <laughs> I've been through, I've been in drugs. I've been in the system. I, I've been locked up. I've been in prison. I've been just running amok. What am I going to do to influence this small city that you've set me in. What am I going to do? 
a couple of minutes from our house, maybe about five minutes from our home, there's a church. And one day the Lord really put it in my heart to go. And we went. And as soon as I walked in the church, I felt strange, felt different. I told my wife, I said, I guarantee you there's a detective or a police officer in here. <laughs> and she said, you're not, that's the old you. This is the new you. You're a new creation. Don't think like that. I said, mm there's something going on here that's pretty fishy. I said, I can, you know, my, my, my criminal sense is coming up. Somebody here is in law enforcement, and I guarantee you it's going to happen. So they started to worship, <clears throat> started to pray, started to worship. Pastor goes up, it's behind the pulpit, and he said, this year is my last year as an Anderson County Sheriff. I told my wife, see, I told you somebody was in here. I told you there was some kind of law enforcement in here. Well, it turns out that the majority of the congregation, they're in law enforcement. <laughs> Fire department, ambulance. So I'm telling my wife, now my criminal sense is really, my hairs are, I'm telling her, man, I can't really, you know, I feel uncomfortable here. And she said, well, the Lord sent you here for a reason. There's a reason why you're here. And I remember we started going we were there a couple of months. The pastor spoke to me and he asked me who I was and what I was doing. I explained to him how the Lord has sent us here. And then he said, one day he called me and he said, can you preach? I said, well, yeah, I can preach. <laughs> Let's do this. I said, but I preach in English and Spanish. Is this going to? He goes, well, just preach in English. And, and OK. So I remember I, I walked up to the pulpit and I just stood there. And I was kind of just, you know, I had a big old smile because God is great. He does wonderful things. He puts you in places where you never thought you would be, right? And I'm, sitting, I'm standing there and I'm thinking, man, how the tables have turned. <laughs> oh, how the tables have turned. I said, now I don't have to listen to you. You have to listen to me. <laughs> and that's what I told him. I said, it's crazy that, you know, I was a hard-earned criminal. I didn't like law enforcement. And I saw a cop, and I had nothing but bad things to say about him. I saw a police car, and I would get scared because I was a criminal, because I was doing things that were wrong. But God took that. And he said, look, I'm going to put you in front of your enemy or who you thought was your enemy, and you're going to preach the gospel to them. You're going to preach the word to them. You're going to tell them about how great I am and how I have changed you. But at the same time, they were watching a miracle because they're used to seeing criminals being bad. And this little criminal was up there telling them that Jesus saves, that God is reigning, that God is the alpha, the omega, the beginning and the end. So fast forward to uh, last year and then um, I told them that I wanted to start a church. And they said, well, the council, our council members want to meet with you. And I said, OK, they set up a date. And I was praying, and I, I called Joe Weininger, I called Ron Simpkins, I called Pastor Mike, and I was nervous. I said, brother, I said, I'm going to meet with these people. And, you know, they hyped me up. They're like, brother, you're the best. You could do this. You're the best. They hyped me up. Like, they know how to hype you up. So I went in there. I'm like, yeah, you know, yeah, Pastor Joe Weininger, he said I could do this. Ron Simpkins, oh, yeah, I'm on the right way. <clears throat> so we go, I go to this meeting, and before I went in, I said, Lord, you take control. You know what you're doing in this small town, and you know what you want to do here. I walked in. I, I sat down. And before I walked in, God just kept on telling me, let him know that you respect his new building. Let him know that this building, you'll respect it. Let him know that you know what it's like to buy a chair for a church. Let him know that you know what it takes for a congregation to build a new building, to put a sacrifice on building a new building. Let him know that you know how much the drums cost, how much speakers cost, and what it takes for a church to do that. Let him know that you are mindful of those things and how to take care of them and, and that I've taught you that. So they, they start asking me questions about my church, about uh, how I am, what I believe in and everything. And they said, is there anything you want to say? And I said, well, I understand this building took a minute for you guys to build. I understand the cost. I understand that, you know, it, it, it takes somebody to take care of it when you're not here. 
And I understand how much it took the congregation and the sacrifice that it was. And they all turned and they looked at one man that was in the corner. And he, was, he had a, a smile from ear to ear. He had a smile from ear to ear. And he said, okay. And I said, okay, so what do you guys need from me? One of the brothers said, well, you know, our insurance is going to go up by $50. I said, oh, I got that. I'm ready to go. Let's do this. And another brother said, no, I'm going to take care of that. And then I said, well, what's the rent? You can use this building from six months to a year. Don't worry about it. We got it. It's okay. Just, you know, let us know who comes in and what you're doing. So here's God sending me to a city that I know nothing about, to a church (laughs) that no right criminal would walk into because all the law enforcement. And he's allowing me to use this church. See, we're in the beginning, church. There's a beginning for everybody. I mean, there's a beginning for you. Even if you, you f- fell back, you can start all over again. You can begin again. You can start over again. There's a beginning for you. And that's always touched my heart so much that there's a beginning. Everybody has that beginning. Now, I'm going to ask you an important question. How many of you have preached at In the Beginning, South Carolina? Raise your hand. Now here's my question. How many of you are going to preach at In the Beginning, South Carolina? Everybody should raise their hands because I'm calling on everybody to go over there and preach because we're going to have revival. Yeah. See, I'm mowing the grass right now. I'm cutting the grass and that seed is going to go. So on behalf of me, my wife, my children in South Carolina, thank you for praying for us. And when you think about the in the beginning, just know that we're there and we're happy and we're just ready to, we're just ready to party. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. My name is Reggie Green and my wife, beautiful wife, Viola. We pastor in Northridge, California. That's in the uh, northwest corner of Los Angeles County. And so, first of all, I mean, August 1st, 28 years of marriage. Praise God. Hallelujah. That's pretty good. We're celebrating that. 38. 38 years of marriage. 38. She, she instructed me. She told me how to say it. I, I blew it. 30. 38 years of marriage, 38 good years, hallelujah, and it's okay. Anyway, so first of all, let me get the thanks out of the way. I, wanna, I, I do want to thank uh, Pastor Mestis for making room for us here, and that's the way I look at it. I, I want to thank the congregation and everyone part of this. We were sucking suds, I guess you could call that. You know, like I said, we're by ourselves, been through a bunch of things, and and uh, our church and our, we've been by, we're on our own. And, and I just want to thank, you know, Pastor Messis for taking a chance just by a recommendation. Pastor Coney Orozco is the one who said to, to, to invite us to come up along with uh, Pastor Tiarina. And uh, we came last year. It was a blessing. And so I want to thank you uh, for your hospitality. Thank you for your grace and your love and support. And it's been a real blast for us. We're committed. You know, like I said, we're in. Uh, I'll be here every year, you know, just to come up. Uh, I love what's happening here. We love what's happening here. And it's beautiful. And then all the friends, old friends that I've seen and new friends, I said, we're really grateful for that. And second, I'd like to uh, uh, thank Pastor Omar for doing exactly the same thing down in Los Angeles, making room for us. And so our church was called Keeping It Real Ministries. And uh, the reason it was called Keeping It Real, it was birthed out of uh, a Bible study in my home. And this is during one of our multiple splits we were part of, you know, fellowship, denominational splits. And I didn't want my kids uh, to be affected in the church by that. So we did something separate. It was called Keeping It Real. And we had a genuine move of God and, you know, move of God there. And, and lots of young people in our congregation, even to this day, it's pretty, pretty awesome. 
but it was called Keeping It Real. We had, we joined last year uh, with the Reach Network, and so we are switching everything over, website and all that, and we're going to have a grand reopening and, you know, and call it, you know, uh, Reach San Fernando Valley. We're going from Keeping It Real. So the, the, everyone's excited and pumped up about that, and so I'm really grateful for Pastor Omar and, and Letty making room for us. In that ministry and in their church and welcoming and, and so we uh, it's really helped a lot. Relationships are good. Relationships are good. Being in church, uh, we've been in church a long time. We pastor, started pastoring in 1986, and uh, in Bakersfield, California, from Bakersfield to Oceanside, from Oceanside to Modesto, from Modesto to New York, from New York to Riverside, Los Angeles. We've been around and we've been through lots of stuff. And I just want to give God praise for keeping us. And I think what really kept us, not, not just keeping us, uh, he kept us sane, kept us on the right track, but the mission, the thing that we're involved in, what we're called to do, which is to reach the world, that, that consumes a lot of grief, regret, broken heart, bad attitudes, disappointment, you know. I mean, if, if we can stay focused on the mission, we will do fine. We will absolutely do fine because the gospel does work. And I really believe that's the secret, just staying close to the Lord and doing what God's called us to do. And so that's been good. We've, uh, the church is, like I said, if, you, if you're over 30, you're an old man in that place. You know what I mean? And so it's always been youth. Our, ch our church is 99% Latino. I don't speak any Spanish, but that seems to be something what I do, I guess, is reach Latinos. And I'm not complaining one bit. I don't care who comes in there. Come on in. You know, but it's pretty interesting. But youth and cross-cultural and then cross-generational. It's an absolute miracle, and it's continuing that way. And uh, we're amped up and pumped up. Our church was, uh, like I said, it was, we had, uh, we, we had, not only we've been through some fellowship splits, and, but uh, we had our own split in our congregation, and it kind of sucked the air out of me because that congregation is my, you know, my baby, man. This is the dream. Everything that I imagined, the worship service, the people, the energy, the, the supernatural, this was all me. I mean, when I say all me, just my dream. My dream has, was coming to pass. It was right there. And then due to different stuff, you know, we lost a lot. But I'm, I, I can stand right here and tell you that the gospel of Jesus Christ works. God is good. The Holy Spirit he is not tired about working, saving souls, changing lives. We stuck to what we know to do. You know what I mean? I whined and cried and I did get butt hurt and, you know, and I, you know, I got all that. But, but I want to tell you, so just stand right on track. We didn't change anything, didn't do anything. Just do what we know to do. Los Angeles County has lots of sinners that need to be saved. And we started, and God started bringing in fresh, crazy Man, we got a crazy congregation. I'll preach about that tomorrow. But just different people from different backgrounds and watch God heal them and touch their lives. The miracles, I'd say the miracles are still happening. I don't know if you contend for miracles. I mean, the, the, the Holy Ghost is not retired. We're physical miracles, mental and emotional miracles. Uh, marriages are being healed. It is amazing. And so after all these years, I am still excited about doing what we're doing. And I've tried to back off a few times, but mm, when you see one person, we just had, and I'm done with this, I had, I shared a testimony with the, about a young man, and uh, I had never fellowshiped with him before. He's been saved for a little less than a year, maybe eight months, fired up into the things of God. So my son, who is my associate pastor, and another brother, we're going to go out and hang out at Buffalo Wild Wings, and he turns to me and, you know, the, he's sitting, he's, he says, Pastor, he says, you don't know my testimony, do you? And I just, I just want to use, it's one of the most striking, brutal, I don't know, it's kind of, it's weird to me. But he says, he says, I was a fornicator. He says, I've, he, he's 23 years old. He says, I was a fornicator. He says, more than you could ever imagine. He says, with at least 50 wit girls. And he said, and he, I don't know if he's exaggerating, and he says, he says, uh, and a hundred times each, probably, which sounds like, an, but I'm just saying, as to, I'm looking at this kid, and he is not exaggerating. I mean, he's, he's, I never heard nothing like that in my life. And he says, 
He says, I'm born again. God is healing my mind. I'm totally changed. I'm not like I used to be. I don't even want, I don't want, you know, he he says, I don't want to date. I don't want to do nothing. My God has to continue to work in my life. And I I just can't help but think, I said, there's all types of walks of life. You never even know what people are going through, what they've done or where they're at. And we are preachers and ministers of the gospel of Jesus Christ. There's not a higher calling. There's not a better position. You know what I mean? And and I said, and I'm grateful for the support. I'm grateful for all the prayers. And my wife and I are very happy. Uh, We're looking forward to the next 38 years of our marriage, but also the next 38 years of ministry. Hallelujah. You give the Lord praise. Hallelujah. Hello, everyone. Hello. Come, brother. Come. Come. You know, we got to stand here to say something up here. So I'm not going to say much because I don't know much. And uh, I'll let this guy uh, talk because he's the mouthpiece for our group. And yeah, he'll tell you everything. But uh, I'm just going to introduce myself. Uh, my name is Pastor Thompson, Frank, and my wife couldn't make it because uh, she had a lot of things to do for the family. So I'm here by myself. <laughs> and uh, we have some branch or partners in the state. So I, I, I called them up to come over and join us here in this conference. This is my uh, maybe third time. Yeah. So I always hide at the back. That's why you guys don't see me like all the time. So there are some, they came from uh, Oklahoma City. Can you guys stand up, please? And there's some, they come with me. Uh, you guys cannot find their, their place or their island on the map because it's very, 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 very small. So we serve a big God that can make things possible, so, right? So I want, I want them to stand, please. And thank you. That's all I can say. And I will let this guy do all, all the talk. Thank you. God is good. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Uh, my name is Pastor... Randy Mickey, and this is my beautiful wife over here. Without her, I cannot succeed in this uh, ministry, just like everybody else. So I thank God for her and for uh, my two daughters. They're not here because they're working. I have this uh, beautiful uh, granddaughter over here. I have... uh, Another one, she's not here. She's with the mom. Um, all of us came from a small, small island in Chuk. That's what they called. And during um, the World War II, that's where the Japanese uh, used it for naval. Um, they, 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 they stay over there. So during the World War II, you know, United States came in and... Uh, took over, and that's why we're a, uh, our status is Federated State of Micronesia. That's what it is. So God is good. He make, like, like brothers say, it's a tiny island, but this God is, is a big God. It's an unlimited God. Uh, it's amazing how he brought us here. Um, 
It begins in, I'm, I'm going to start in Hawaii because it's, it's going to be a long story if I'm going to talk about it. So I'm just going to start from Hawaii. Uh, we, we moved to Hawaii and then that's when God called us to be a pastor. And then that's where we begin the, the mission at Hawaii. And then God just, you know, just keep me in Hawaii for, I think, uh, 10 years. I've been pastoring in uh, Hawaii until um, we came here. And it's kind of amazing how God moved because me and some pastors, we used to get together at 10 p.m. And we prayed all the way to 6 a.m. in the morning. And we did this every day. And you know what we thought? If we are there for God, God will take care of our family. Right? We trust that if we're, we spend time with God, we represent the church, we represent our family, and we represent everybody else. And we have a vision that, you know, we just prayed about and God moved us. And that's why we're here. God connected us somehow to Pastor Michael. On the messenger, on, on the internet. Somehow God just answered our prayer and he brought us Pastor Michael. And you know how, how amazing it is? Three months before the conference, three years ago. And Pastor Michael just met us on, you know, on Messenger. We formed a small group. And he said, well, there is a conference coming up. And I'll be happy to see you guys. Verbally. He didn't believe that we're going to come here. But God is at work. Amen. So when we came to that first um, conference three years ago, it's only me and Pastor Thompson. And we were kind of nervous because that's how we are. We're kind of just look around and, you know, scared. We don't know what to do, you know. And we begin to see God in all of you. And we're so blessed and glad that we're part of God's family. And from that time on, when, when I came here, Pastor Thompson went back to Hawaii. And God started to move in my life. And uh, he told me to help a brother. He's supposed to be here. He was supposed to stand here and testimony. And before... Before this conference, he flew out because he had a family problem. He flew to, to Guam. His name is Pastor Atau. And he's the one that pastor in that church. And I'm just a mentor to him. And the reason why we're, we're here is because, because all of you to pray. And I thank God for everybody. And continue to pray for us. Thank you.